Hey, YouTube people out there somewhere, wherever you are. Uh, it's Sean. Haven't made a video in a long time, but uh, I tore my Achilles tendon um, a couple weeks ago. I had surgery this past week on it, so thought I would share a video. Um, mainly just because I have a lot of time. I'm kind of bored. Um, but I don't know what time you're watching this, but at this current moment that I'm recording this, the coronavirus is multiplying like crazy, as oftentimes viruses do. Um, this one being deadly in some form and fashion. People are freaking out and, um, you know, wondering what they need to do um, in order to stay safe. Um, and what I've learned through the 34 years of my short life is you need to have your hope and your confidence and your security anchored to something that is solid. Um, not something that anything in this world can touch or anything in this world can infect, but something solid. Like the Bible has said since the beginning, the world has been infected by sin, by a virus. Um, after God created the world, everything was good, but then he created us and he gave us free will, and we used that free will, unfortunately, to push away from him and say, we got things settled, we got things taken care of, and, well, we can kind of see that in our everyday day life with our relationships with people and our relationship with God. Um, but the Bible, Bible makes clear that this virus has overtaken our world and it's multiplied. And it's, a, it's infected every single human being, and it's resulted in death, and death physically, but also in death spiritually, a separation from our relationship with our Heavenly Father. And so in a time when you could feel very hopeless about whether it's the coronavirus or just, man, what do we do about our relationship with God? We don't have to panic because God didn't give up on us. You know, I, I heard about a 103-year-old woman from China who actually beat the coronavirus. She, you know, even though there's not a medicine for it, you know, there's not a cure, hey, her body was able to fight it off. And I, I wondered, man, what if, I don't you know, I know this isn't how it works, but what if her blood, you know, somehow now carried this like antidote that was able to cure people of this virus? I mean, wouldn't that be awesome? And I thought, actually, that's what Jesus did. You know, Jesus was God who wrapped himself in flesh and came down into our world and entered into this sin-filled, virus-filled world and had this virus, this sin, our pride, our selfishness, our greed, all these things that lead to chaos and destruction in our lives and our relationship. All of those were placed upon Jesus when he went to the cross as he was ridiculed, as he was shamed, as he was nailed to a Roman cross. And, and he died as the consequence of it. He was infected. And he died. But he didn't stay dead. You know, he conquered the grave. He rose back to life. And now he says, hey, my blood is now the antidote for your sin, for your virus. The thing that is separating you from your heavenly father and oftentimes separates you from people you love. It causes conflict and chaos in our relationships. And so if you don't have that hope, that, that man, there is an antidote, that you have a hope, a security that is fixed to something that nothing in this world can can take away from you. I pray that you would consider exploring who Jesus is. Jesus of Nazareth. Who was he? Did he really exist? Did he really die on a cross? Did he really rise from the dead? Because the answers to those questions, well, I think will transform your life. Give you hope no matter what's going on in our world.